All right, everybody, good morning. My name is Dan McGraw, and you are joining us here at Florida Luxury Realty. We so much thank you for, for stopping by to spend a little bit of time with us on this great day. If you're, if you're watching this virtually, uh, we thank you for taking time. If you're here in the classroom, thank you for being here. Uh, we're gonna be going over a really important subject today, and that's training your sphere of influence for leads. Your sphere of influence is people that you know, people who already know, like, and trust you, and we're gonna talk a lot about that today and how you can take advantage of the people that you know um, and those relationships you have to continue to build trust with them and to increase the scope of your current real estate business. So uh, I, want, I would like to share this information with you and I'm excited to be with you today. Hope all of you are, are having a great week so far. So let's get started. So here's a question for you. How do you train your sphere of influence to be advocates for referring you leads. And what I mean by that is you're gonna have people that you know in your life that are going to naturally wanna do business with you because of the relationship, but how do you get more out of those relationships? So today's purpose and objective for the class is we're gonna be identifying who your sphere of influence is and which are the most valuable to your business. The top five methods for reaching out to your sphere of influence for receiving referrals, reviewing the tools and features that are best for servicing your sphere of influence for referral leads, reviewing amazing tips for being a, a raving fan by your sphere of influence and training them for effective referrals, and hot ideas for using social media to work your sphere for referral leads. So these are all gonna be things we're gonna be covering today. Even before you became a real estate agent, there was a group of people out there upon which you have some influence just because they know you, right? So you can think of some of these people in your life that already know you, and you might remember when you got licensed, whether you've been licensed for a long time, or if you just got licensed recently, there was probably some excitement with those individuals that you were becoming a real estate agent, and quickly some conversations probably began about, you know, I am an individual who might be interested in buying or selling a home. So I want you to think back on those conversations because we're gonna expand on that some more. Who is your sphere of influence, obviously? Um, your sphere of influence or your SOI are people, including your family and friends and those whom you do business, for instance, hairdressers, lawn service personnel, fellow organization or club members, et cetera. So if you belong to a not-for-profit group or a volunteer organization or you go to a church, you likely have people in your groups and in your sphere that you interact with on a daily or weekly basis. And so why is your sphere of influence valuable? Why is it valuable to you, to your business and to your real estate um, pursuits? Well, referrals from your sphere of influence are loyal leads because it resulted from a personal recommendation and there's already a level of trust in your provided service and i'd like to share with you real quick a, a personal experience that i had about a year and a half ago i had uh, was contacted by an old co-worker of mine and he said he and his wife were interested in building a home in the riverview area and for those of you that don't know that's uh, near the tampa bay area here in our market and so i quickly began to do some investigating and learning what type of homes were available down there. And we were able to successfully go out, preview some model centers and put them in a beautiful home. But I didn't stop there. Obviously I wanted to gain more business. So I asked them if they might know anybody who was looking to buy or sell in their sphere of influence. And they actually did. And they referred me to additional folks who ended up building homes with me uh, within the following year that of that particular uh, calendar year. So it does actually work when you ask your sphere for business. Referrals from your sphere of influence is easy business. And what I mean by that is when you know somebody already, there's a personal connection that's already taken place. Have any of you ever worked with cold leads before or uh, call, cold calling or talk to people who you didn't know? There's a certain level of awkwardness that's going to occur as a result of that simply because you don't have any history with them, you don't have any foundation or relationship. So working with people that you already know is an advantage to you in so many ways. The main way is that they already trust you. 
So here's some staggering facts about asking for referrals. And you say, Dan, what do you mean I have to ask for referrals? Well, here's the thing. I just wanna, before we go into these statistics, I just wanna challenge you to think about this. You know, if you think about your average day, okay? Uh, you go to work, right? You have a long day at work. You have, you're dealing with your kids. Maybe you're getting them off to soccer. Maybe you're getting them off to dance. And then you get home late at night and somebody has to make the dinner. And you know, you've got all these things happening in your day. So let me ask you, are you always thinking about referring business to all of your friends, people in your life? And I, I think that if we're honest, the answer is no, you're not thinking about those things um, because you're sidetracked. So what it, what it takes is one of those individuals to actually approach you and say, hey, I'm interested in getting business and I'd like to help some of your friends and family. Would you be willing to refer me to somebody would you trust me to do a good job for them? And so you become front of mind or they become front of mind for you. So that is why we have to think about asking for referrals and there is a right way to do this. 91% of customers say that they give a referral, meaning that they've done business with the individual and that they would be happy to give referrals. Here's the staggering part. Only 11% of us that are in sales ask for referrals. Isn't that crazy? So there's this amazing amount of business that's going on in our industry around us and right in our own backyard, but we're looking in the wrong places for that business. I'd like to ask you a question. So in 2018, who would like to take a guess? What percentage of homes in the U.S. were sold as a result of a referral? Somebody knowing somebody else. Does anybody want to take a stab? 80%. 80%. What do you think, Mario? What percentage of homes were sold off of referral? I will say about 70, 70, 80%. Yeah, so your guys are right. You know, it was 80% of homes were sold as a result of referral. That's really compelling because what do we hear and see when we're out in the real estate industry? We hear leads, we hear websites, we hear S, you know, search engine optimization. We hear all of these things that we have to do to create business. And yet the industry is telling us that 80% of people bought a home from a realtor through someone they knew. So why are we spending 80% of the time focusing on 20% of the business when 80% of the business is in our own backyard? It's in your database already. So all you've got to do is begin to understand that first so that you can come up with a plan to start to convert those friends and family and acquaintance in networks into business. So here's some facts about asking for a referral. 39% of sellers used a realtor that they were referred to by a friend or family member and 82% of all real estate transactions came from referral. It's a big number. More than 60% of real estate agents who made more than 100,000 a year used to refer in customer service software. More than 65% of agents who make less than 35,000 do not use referral and do not use referral based software. What's that tell you? That tells you that the people that are investing time in their sphere, doing follow up, keeping track in their database are successful, right? So I just want to quickly talk about, does everybody here know what your database or your CRM is? the contact relationship manager, but I like to call it something different. Does anyone else know what the acronym is for CRM? It's a cash register machine because without those folks in your database, you really don't have a business to build because that means every day you step out your door, you've got to go create new business. And I don't want you to have to step out your door every day and create new business. I want your database and your sphere bringing business to you. So let me ask you a question. How in the world do you ask for referrals? I mean, I get this question all the time. You know, I have friends, Dan, I have family, but the last thing I want to be is that salesperson at their door who is asking for a sale. Raise your hand if you've ever had high pressure sales thrown on you. Okay. So we're just going to throw out some industries who tend to do this a little bit. Nothing wrong. They sell a lot of stuff, but Who's had a vacuum cleaner sold to them or attempted to have a vacuum cleaner sold to them, right? Remember in the old in the in the 80s and 90s, they pour the dirt down on your floor and vacuum most of it up and say, hey, do you want to buy a vacuum? And you might say yes, no, or get out, or whatever the case. 
Who, who's ever been pitched cookware at a mall or at a seminar, right? Remember the old cookwares? They'd set up, they'd really pitch you on everything. So we all know, and we probably all have a friend or family member who works in some type of an MLM, and they want to find you and have coffee with you so that they can talk you into buying their product or service, okay? What do we do when we see those people coming? Right. Run. We want to get out the door because we know they're not interested in finding out about my weekend. They want to sign me up for their MLM, right? I don't want you to be perceived by your sphere in this way. So there's a way to do this where they will truly understand that you're there to present value. You're not there to sell them anything. Let me ask you, can you sell someone a house if they don't need a house? Pretty hard to do, right? I mean, someone's going to have to go get a mortgage and they're going to have to move, right? We are moving a commodity, uh, a lifestyle, if you will, that is not something that people are gonna just purchase on a whim, right? This isn't an automobile or an RV. This is something very different. So here's some effective methods to ask for referrals. You can call and use the telephone script. All of you should know that in the back office, we have telephone scripts for you. Currently right now, if you're not enrolled in our intensity class, you should be because we're doing review of scripts and dialogues. For those of you that are uh, listening to this pre-recorded, um, four times a year we run an intensity class that runs six weeks. It's a real estate boot camp to get you ready for the real estate world. So using your scripts, making those phone calls is a great way to connect. And so uh, just a little tip, while you're making those phone calls, you need to use the 80-20 rule. Who knows what the 80-20 rule is? You're gonna listen 80% of the time, and then you're gonna talk 20. And when you're talking, you're gonna ask questions. So Mario, tell me, how are your children? Okay. Do they play any sports? Yes. Okay, what sports? Uh, baseball. Baseball, all right. Are they in a softball league or a junior softball. baseball? Softball, okay. And what area do they play? Oh, she's a uh, uh, second base. Second base, all right, that's great. Okay, so I've made a connection with him. And if I have anybody in my life that plays baseball or second base, we're going to have a connection now. And that's what I want to ask you to do. I want to ask you to ask questions, show interest in your sphere. The next thing you can do is launch an email drip campaign. Now I know emails can get a little bit obnoxious. So I want you to have a really good thought out drip campaign. If at our brokerage, we provide one to you, but if you're not with Florida Luxury Realty, make sure that you're looking at what your customers are getting because you want it to provide some type of value and not just be an email for the sake of an email. Who gets too many emails? Right, can't, can't stand it. I can't delete them as fast as they come in. So make sure that your drip campaign is a value point. I will tell you this, the more personal it is, the more chance it has of getting open and redeemed and read. Connect with social media. Who does video in here on their social media? I wanna see a lot of hands go up, thank you, Greg. Who should do video on their social media? All the hands should go up, everybody, right? So I always tell this story in most of my classes, but you know what it costs to run a commercial during the Super Bowl? A lot of zeros, guys. Millions of dollars that they pay for a 15 or 30 second commercial that you may or may not even remember, right? You have a phone in your pocket, most of us, that are smartphones and you can hit the live button, right? And you can be in front of an entire audience of your friends and family and people that you don't even know, absolutely free, telling your story, asking people if they need help. And if you're not doing that on social media, then you're missing a tremendous opportunity. And I'll be happy to share with you a few agents who are doing this and I challenge you to go watch what they're doing. And there's no, uh, it's no mistake that their real estate businesses are booming because they're getting on social media and they're asking a question. And here's what they ask. Have you ever thought about buying a home? Are you curious what it takes to get a mortgage? What kind of a credit score do you need to get financing? What type of loan programs are out there for first time home buyers? These are things that people are interested in hearing. It piques their interest and they will follow you on social media. You can also send letters and cards. I am a huge fan of the personal signed handwritten note card, Mario. I so much enjoyed our last conversation. Your daughter is probably going to be a professional level second baseman before it's all over, if that's the decision she makes. But I wanna tell you this, next time we get together, I'd love to go watch one of her games. And so you're making a personal connection with those handwritten letters and cards. There's a word in here I don't ever want you guys to do, and that's form letter. Who knows what a form letter is? Dear current resident, right? We hate form letters. Who sends out form letters? Attorneys, tax collectors, right? 
We don't want to send out form letters. We want to send out personalized handwritten letters to our sphere. What are some things, uh, and you could probably jump in on this, Greg, what are some things that you might talk about in those handwritten letters? Or what are some of the, the what's some of the content you might put in there when you're just having a casual uh, handwritten note to somebody? Well, one of the things that I really like is just in a handwritten letter, just the thinking of you. Yeah. You know, because people, especially if it's somebody you've done business with in the past, and this is another statistic just to tie in, 50% of people who buy or sell a home can't remember their real estate agent's name a year later. That is a great point. So do you know that most real estate professionals sell a home to somebody and then they never talk to them again? And 50% of people who bought a home from a realtor, even if they love them within a year, can't remember their name. In fact, they'll argue with their spouse about what the individual's name was. And here's how it goes. A month after closing, Dan was a great realtor. Six months after closing, Dave was a great realtor. And a year after closing, I don't even know if this guy's still in the business. I haven't heard from him. So our job doesn't end on the day of closing. You guys in this room are gonna have a lot of closings happen. You're gonna be very successful. But the most important thing you have to do after that closing is to continue to stay in touch with the individual. They bought the home. Does that mean that your relationship is over? No, your relationship is just beginning because they have other people that will need to use your services and they themselves statistically will move in three to five years if they're in the Tampa Bay area, mostly in Florida. So I don't know if you know that or not, but right around here where we all live, people move every three to five years. If someone says seven to 10, they're like veterans, right? Like they've been around forever because people don't stay in their home. How long I've lived in my home now, three years. So I'm within that window where people start thinking about selling, right? Most people don't stay. So keep that in mind. And then this is so critical. The last step here, visit in person. If you could do nothing for an entire year, but visit everyone in your database with a door knock at their door and dropping off a gift card to them and saying hello and bringing them donuts to their office, you would do extremely well. Why do people appreciate an in-person visit? Because it doesn't happen. Because in this world, nobody does it anymore. It just doesn't happen. People don't take time out of their own busy day to stop by and see you unless they want something. And what I want you to do is I want you to go visit them with the zero strings attached. I want you to stop by and see them because you want to, and you just want to see how they're doing. And this isn't about going in there and going all out on trying to get them to buy or sell a house with you that day. This is about making a connection and reminding them that you're there to help their friends and family. Mario? I went to visit a Frank Wolf in his little distance um, shop, and I haven't seen him in three years. And what he said was, I haven't seen in three years since I opened my shop. You remember that I wasn't there. Right. I don't know how, but the first thing he says is that. Yeah. And I felt like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like Tiana said, now in the chat, she just said an in-person visit is an investment of your time. That's right. So somebody's going to appreciate that as a real estate agent, we're busy. We're out doing all this business, but we've chosen to take a minute and spend you know five ten minutes of our time with that person and i think it's a great point it really is i've got a service provider in insurance and she does it better than anybody and every year at least twice a year she just calls me and she says how are you and your wife liking your health insurance is it doing everything that it's supposed to be doing for you and it's not to ask me to sign up for a new policy i mean i have the policy at auto renews but it's to just touch base with me and make sure that I'm getting the service that she promised. And it, but it's more than that, it's connecting with me. It gives me an opportunity to say hi to her, to ask her about her family. And truthfully, when someone chooses to use you as a service provider, it has little to nothing to do with the things that you think that matter. It has everything to do with the relationship that you've built with them through trust and through connection. When someone goes to a beautician or someone goes to a restaurant, they oftentimes say, I go there because of the manager. Mm -hmm. I go there because the service is great, people treat me right. And I'll give you an, an, a great example of this. Do you know that most doctors, when they're reviewed by their patients, the things that make them review high are not anything to do with outcomes, mm -hmm. okay? They're to do with the way that they're treated. Do they get seen promptly? When they get seen, does the physician remember their name? Do they listen to them? Do they give them a two or three minute window to just talk, right? 
that is what someone gauges you by your professionalism is those things not necessarily just by your performance so i want you to remember that what is attributed to the failure in asking our sphere of influence for referrals most real estate agents do not have a working action system and tools for working their sphere of influence for leads so they might jot down a post-it note here and here's what we all tell ourselves you know i really need to get back to joe one of these days, I'm gonna give Joe a call, I'm gonna get back to him, but if it's not in our plan of attack for every single day, then it's not gonna happen. We need to have a specific day and time when we sit down and block out the world, no title companies, no training classes, no dishes, no PlayStation, okay? And we're gonna make our phone calls to the people in our sphere. Training my sphere of influence, what are the right tools for servicing my SOI for leads? Well. We talked about it earlier, your database. If you don't have one with your brokerage, you need to get one. If you're with Florida Luxury Realty, then obviously you have our back office, which has a lot of interactive components. Also your daily scheduler for planning duties and time to stay in touch. Um, who has a daily and weekly written plan? If you don't have one, then what happens to you? Life, you get up and if you don't feel like it, you don't do it. And here's the news for you. Every day you don't feel like it, right? What makes you feel like it though is when you're closing properties, right? When you're making money for yourself and your family, when you're satisfying the needs of your clients and your customers, that's what makes it feel right. But you have to first put your feet in the water before the water parts, okay? What are the right tools for servicing my sphere of influence? Um, hello, my name is Joe and I'm calling to talk to you about the particular product. Is this a convenient time to talk? Scripts and action plans. We provide you with the proven scripts and action plans and the templates and much, much more. Um, if you're listening to this remotely and you don't have scripts, there are a lot of really great providers of scripts out there. Um, you can go to YouTube, you can go to real estate trainings, um, and you can get these scripts that will help guide you through what to say to people. Do you know the number one pe reason people don't call? They don't know what to say. Like, what would I say? If I call somebody I haven't talked to in a while, yeah, I'm gonna tell them I'm a realtor, but what do I really say to them? What am I really gonna be talking about? So make sure that you have scripts in your plan. So Johnny Depp has a net worth of over 200 million. What does he do for a living, right? So what does Johnny Depp do for a living? Anybody know? He's a pirate, I thought. No. <laughs> yeah, he's an actor, right? He's an actor. But he connects with people, doesn't he? Well, and all he does is he takes words that somebody else wrote and brings them to life. That's exactly right. He reads a script. He reads a script. He actually reads a script, doesn't he? And so you can see him in one movie, a completely different character than in another. And what he's doing is influencing you with his words. Let me give you an example of this. Um, Mario, I really appreciate and like the job that you're doing. I think that you show energy and interest in your customers, and I'm glad to have you on the team. Those words that I used likely encouraged Mario to want to do more and be a better agent. What if I said, Mario, if you don't start coming in earlier and getting your crap together, you're just not going to ever make any money, man. Let's call it like it is. Okay. How does Mario feel now? Not so great, right? I just changed the words that I used, but those words were really powerful and impactful. Words can change a nation. Words can launch a war. Words can stop a war, right? So we have to be thoughtful in what we're saying. And that's a great example, Greg, with Johnny Depp there. I'm a Johnny Depp fan myself. Um, what features should you be seeking in a contact relationship management software? Well, you gotta be able to have their client information it's gotta be able to identify the type of client. It should have some type of an email drip component to it so that it can automatically send out emails to your customer. Who wants to sit, sit down and pen out 100 or 200 emails a day? Anybody seem think that's a good use of your time? No, your system needs to do that for you. I should also be able to keep notes. So here's the thing. When you sit down and call 30, 40 people over the course of a week, you're never gonna remember the conversations you have with them unless you have a note system. But why is taking notes on that particular conversation so critical? Why do you think that is? Yeah, keep track of what you talked about. So I haven't talked to Mario in three months. 
I jump back into my database. It's time to call Mario again. It's been my 90 day window, right? I'm going to call him. And if I have no notes, I have no point of reference. I'm strictly working off a of memory. Now I'm a good friend, but I don't remember everything we talked about last time. I don't remember if the time before that we've discussed it again. I need my notes. I need my notes. Put as many notes in there as you can about specifics about their life because that's going to enable you. Not only that, but it also will enable you, let's say that there's an event coming up. So Mario's son is graduating from high school. He's been accepted to Florida State. Is that an interaction that I need to be having with him when that happens? Absolutely. He needs to be getting a card and a phone call from me congratulating him on that on the day his son graduates. How much does that mean to him if his realtor friend calls him and congratulates him on the day his son is graduating high school and about to start college? Makes a big difference. And then, of course, your CRM also needs to be able to follow up schedule. It needs to do two things. One, it needs to be able to have you schedule in it, but it also needs to be able to remind you to do things. Because, again, you don't want to run around with a bunch of post-it notes on your forehead, right? So you need a system that will work with you. Um, <clears throat> what a real estate CRM does is it accommodates you for your needs and servicing your customers. Good morning. Good morning. What daily scheduling system is great for setting follow-up appointments? Anybody know? Google. <laughs> Google's great for this. So here's the thing. Google has a lot of really neat tools. In fact, we actually teach a Google Tools class at this office. And what I'd like to tell you is Google gives you the ability to do something really cool with your calendar, and that's to share your calendar. Does everybody here know what Google Calendar is or has basically seen it? Okay, so what would be a good thing? You got it on your phone, very good. Um, what would be a good thing about sharing your calendar to another person that you know? What do you think would be a benefit to that? Inform them what you're doing. It, you, can, you can inform them as far as what you're doing. That's exactly right. Could you, could you not share your calendar with someone who's an accountability partner? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Does every does everybody in here at least know what an accountability partner is? And, and if you do, hopefully that you either have one or you're working to get one. Um, I'll tell you a story. My in my life, my accountability partner happens to be my best friend. So anytime I set a goal, I am sure to tell my best friend what my goal is and why do I do that? <laughs> That's right. He's always, always unemotionally gonna tap me on the shoulder and say, so, Dan, how is your goal shaping up? Where are you with your goal? Are you ahead of schedule, behind schedule? And if I'm not on task, he's going to remind me. And if I'm ahead, he, we're going to celebrate a little bit. So using your Google Calendar, that's a great way you can share your calendar. Also is going to give you the ability to um, collaborate with other people in your business, right? So Greg and I share a Google Calendar so that we know where each other is during the day because we're both broker support for the company. So if he's in a meeting, I need to know that so that I can answer the phone and vice versa. So that is an example. And as he's on the phone answering it now, um, that is an example, but who might you share it within your business? What about your transaction coordinator or your administrative assistant, your buyer's agent, right? Or your listing agent, somebody that works within your team of professionals to know your schedule. What about your customers? So what if they wanted to grab an appointment with you and you sent them your Google Calendar and said, hey, here's my available times. Plug in a time when you can meet with me. So there's a lot of different reasons that you need to have this for scheduling. So each day you should be entering at least five names into your database. How's that possible? Well, folks, real estate is a contact sport. That means you got to get out there and you got to shake hands with people. You got to meet people. You don't want to do real estate sitting behind your desk all day, do you? No, 1975, that was a terrific way to do business. You pick up the phone, you call people. Okay, today, more than ever, you've got to be out there in front of your people. Can you use text messaging as a way to communicate with people now? Yeah. So here's what I do when I'm working with a buyer. I'll say to them, let me ask you a question. How would you like to be communicated with? Does everybody like to talk on the phone? Eh. 
And now more than ever, we really kind of like a text because a text I can respond to, I don't have to get into a deep conversation. So in most cases, your customers are gonna say, send me a text, right? Now there are some drawbacks to using the text. I'm gonna talk about this briefly. What do you think maybe some drawbacks of texting might be? It's impersonal. It can be impersonal, okay. Late response. Yes, so how many times do you check a text, but then you're getting a call from a customer or from a service provider, and then you forget to go back in and respond, that person could potentially feel neglected, right? So that's, that's, that's a potential. But the other one, um, there's two that I want to uh, get you to think about. One is that things can be misinterpreted through text or misread, misread, right? Mistyped. <laughs> Mistyped, yeah, or, or, or misvoiced to text, right? So that can happen. Um, the other thing is people have a tendency to take a little more liberty with texting you. Somebody probably wouldn't call you at 1030 at night if they had a thought pop in their head, but if, if they have the ability to text you and you're more casual in your interaction, they might text you. So you'll just need to set some parameters with them um, with like a how I work flyer or something right up front to let them know, hey, if you text me after 8.30 p.m. and it's not a true emergency, I'll respond to you after 8 a.m. the following day. So don't expect to get into a 20 or 30 minute text answer with me at 10 o'clock at night because in all likelihood, I'm getting ready for the next day of business but using text message is great. Um, launching a drip email campaign. So your, 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 your CRM should be able to do this for you. Um, who's ever used constant contact or MailChimp? Anyone ever used any of those? Yeah, so those are services that you can get that some are free and some are uh, paid. But what they allow you to do is to put a database of emails in there and then send out a consistent or regular message to the recipients in that list. What might be something that you would be sending out today to your clients? Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah, that would be an option. So you might choose to send out some holiday messages. Um, what about tax time? We just came through the tax deadline. You know, would it be nice to remind your, your, your friends and family to be aware that taxes are due, right? What about homestead for the people who have bought homes from you that have to homestead prior to March 1st of the following year? That would be a great email drip. Now, do you want to sit down and remember to email personally every single one of these people? No. So they appreciate it when they get an email. In fact, I sent my buyer an email this last March, that, or actually within February, that said, don't forget your homestead. You've got to get the ball rolling on that. So they do appreciate that. I want to talk a little bit more about social media and about Facebook, because I think we, we, we really are missing an opportunity on Facebook. And so many ways. Um, there's a thing that can begin to happen on social media if we're not careful, and, and, that's, and that's, to, that's our audience tuning out. So why do you think an audience tunes out? Let, let's just take a look at, uh, at a show, a TV show that you've watched for a number of years. Why do you stop watching? Uh, lose interest, repetitive, maybe a little boring, gets on your nerves, you know? Um, there's a couple of really big shows that are in their eighth and ninth seasons now, and people are starting to jump and say, you know what, we're not going to watch these shows anymore because they just aren't what they were in the beginning, right? So I want to caution you against having the exact same message, but what I don't want you to do is to not be on social media all the time with something new. And so the best way to connect on social media is what we call organically. Does everybody know what that means? Organic connection, okay. I see some people do and, and some of you don't, and that's okay, that's what we're here for today. Um, an organic connection means a real, in-person, from the heart connection. So that means that I've been out all day, I've been working with my customers, I'm a little tired, I swing by a new restaurant on the way home and they give me great service and I jump on Facebook and I do a short video about how great Sally's Cafe treated me after a long day of working with clients and customers, I stopped into Sally's Cafe and I just have to recommend the latte and the muffin. And you will see that that's a real connection because people go, hey, I didn't know Sally's was in, in Spring Hill. I had no idea. Yeah. And they will view you and like you and share you way more often than if you go, hi, I'm Dan and I'm a realtor and I sell houses and buy a house from me. And then the next day I do the same thing and the same thing. I can jump into 
uh, a breakfast station and hop on Facebook Live and just talk about the place and I'll get more, way more views from people because why, so why do they like that? Why do they like that? Because you do something, they pay attention to other things. Right, because you, you're bringing them in. They don't have to physically go there. You're bringing them into the restaurant. You're bringing them into the shop, wherever you're at. But here's the main thing. It's organic. It's it's real. There's not a lot of real out there. Yeah. There's, a, there's a saying on Facebook, if your life could be as great as Facebook looks like it is, right? People aren't real. So when you're real and you go on there and you just talk from the heart, people connect with that, okay? So I want to just share that with you. We talk about the in-person visit. This is something that I'm really big on. So you have a friend and your friend runs a travel agency. You've known them for several years. You haven't talked in a while. Let's use your friend actually. Let me change it up. We'll use your friend with the, does he have a mechanic shop? Yes. And can I ask your friend's name if you're not, if you don't mind? Okay. So you're going to go by, you're going to meet with your friend. And so, you know, you haven't seen him in a while. So here's what would be really cool. If you swung through Panera Bread and you picked up lunch for him and for all of his mechanic staff and his receptionist and any of his vendors that are coming by, and you just showed up and you said, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. I've really missed you. Can I just provide you with lunch? I just was thinking about you and uh, I wanted to come by and say hi. How's that reception going to be? Very, very good. And what is that going to cost you? Lunch. Yeah, lunch. <laughs> Bagels, right? Juice. I mean, this is not, but 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 I want you to make these visits impactful. I don't just want you to go and beg for business. Make it make it memorable. Make it memorable. And when they see you coming, they're gonna go, here he comes, he's got lunch with the sky, right? And what happens when you leave? What do they do? Talk about you. They talk about you to each other. They talk about you to their friends. They go, You will not believe Mario came by today and he had the cinnamon crunch bagels from Panera Bread, and now I'm off my diet, but I love Mario because those are the best, right? So those in-person visits are so important. What about leaving a pop-by gift? A pop-by gift can be something very small, but, but somewhat personal, or it can be something small. I'll tell you a true story. I got a card from, uh, from our owner, Mr. Scott Barrett, and uh, about a month after I started working here, and it was nothing more than a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. I think it had a, a five or ten dollar value, but it just said, "Hey, thinking of you, you're doing a great job. Keep it up." I mean, just totally. In that moment, I was having a really bad time in my life at that point, and getting that was so encouraging for me. I mean, and 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 you know, your customers are the same way. They have the stresses of life. They have family challenges. Their kids are sick. They have these things. So when you do something kind like that for them, it really goes a long way. So um, there's a great list of pop by gifts on brianbuffini.com. If you ever want to go to Brian Buffini, if you haven't taken Peak Producer with Brian Buffini, that is a great course to take. I actually took it last year. Um, and so these are, are personalized gifts. This is like, a, I think, a server of some type for pie. And it says, any way you slice it, I'm grateful for your referrals. Oh, okay. Nice. So it's just a cute saying. I have another one that I like to drop off. It says, my realtor really cuts the mustard. And it's just a little two-pack, a little tiny two-pack of ketchup and mustard. And I drop it off and I put the little thing on the front. And here you go. But I have a reason for being there. I bring something cute with me. And the relationships that happen, guys, the, the, the referrals just pour in from this. This is a, a really great way to build your business. Um, ask them to call you when they know something, when they know someone who's needing your services. This is really important. So Mario, do you know anybody who might be looking to buy or sell? You do. Okay, terrific. I'd love to help them out. Now let me ask you, is it better to get their phone number or to give them yours? Let me ask. So you would, you would say respectfully, would you mind asking them if it's okay if I reach out to them? And then what am I going to do tomorrow? Reach out back to you. Get back tomorrow. I'm going to reach out to that particular customer. I'm going to say, hey, I'd, I'd love to help you. I understand we have a mutual friend in Mario. What a great guy. I'd love to help you find a house. And what if their time frame isn't right now? Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Guess what? Most people's time frame isn't right now. Most of the real estate that we sell isn't right now. But do you know what most of the realtors worry about and focus on? 
No. <laughs> I want my paycheck Friday, right? That's what they focus on. And they leave the other 75% of business, they neglect it. But that's where you and I are going to come in and we're going to take that business away because we know those people are there. You'll miss out on 50% or more of your leads um, if they're handing out your card. So I want to, I want to also challenge you to do, I know all of us in this room have a mobile app and we should be sharing that mobile app to our customers. That mobile app does a few things. It brands you in their smartphone, but it also gives them your contact information in their smartphone. Do you think if they're driving around that they're going to have your business card on them? Mm, no. So now they got to go look you up and try to find you. They have your mobile app in their phone. It's a click, click situation. They open your app, they connect with you immediately. You want to make it as easy as possible for people to connect with you. And this is really, really good. And, I, and this gets missed a lot. Always acknowledge a referral with a personalized thank you. Send them a handwritten card or take them to lunch. What a great, what a great idea. And so um, in this situation, I've been referred a customer by another friend. I take them out, whether I saw them in the house or not. I'm still going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call and thank the person that referred them. And I'm going to say, hey, do you want to grab coffee sometime next week? I haven't seen you in a while. Let's do that. Why? Because they went out of their way to recommend you to someone that they know. They put their reputation on the line. So you need to show them gratitude. And this cycle will continue. And what will happen is that sphere you have will just grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And your reach will get farther and farther and farther. And here's the great thing. Zillow can't take that away from me. Yeah. Truly, I can't take that away from you. So you're building this for yourself and you're building this for your future. Let your customers know how things are going when they refer you somebody. Give them an update. You know, I've been working with Jane and things are going great. We're real close to finding her a pool home. We found a few that were just about what she needed, but they want to slide. And then create conversations on social media around you. Here's a great idea. When you close a property, have a picture taken of yourself and with the client's permission of them that says beautiful home sold by Dan McGraw. And you take a picture with the customer and you share it. You tag them on Facebook. You tag yourself on Facebook. What are you doing? You're sharing the world their exciting day. There's no more exciting day for them than when they buy or sell their house. So you want to be a part of that and you want to broadcast that on social media. Um, here's a thing you can do. You can do a big shout out. I'd like to give a big shout out to my circle of friends and family. I want to thank you all for always recommending me to those that you know and those that need the best real estate service available. Professional knowledge, caring, and getting it done is who I am as a real estate agent. If you know anyone that would benefit from my services, please message me. I have time for helping them accomplish their real estate needs. This, that last sentence there, I want you guys to write that down. I really do because this is so important. I have time to help them accomplish their real estate needs. Here's a big mistake that we make in this business. Greg, how are things in your world? Oh, everything's good. Everything's good, okay? But a lot of realtors say this, oh, Dan, I'm so busy. Now, if you care about somebody and you like them, do you want to refer business to somebody who's already so busy? No, I would never do that to you, right? So what do you say? How are things in your world? Things are great. Always looking for more business, but things are great. I'm working on five clients right now, but you know what? I can handle more. Give them the idea that you want more business, but we want to flex our muscle and show them how busy we are. So we say, you know, I'm really busy. We tell them that. And I challenge you when you're talking to your realtor peers to ask them that question. And here's what you're going to find. The ones that are working on 20 or 30 files at a time, they're not going to say they're busy. They've learned this lesson. The ones that are working on one or two are going to drag their bag in the front door and say, oh, I'm so busy. I mean, I have this customer. If you only knew how challenging they were. So you want to put out to the universe that you're willing to take business. And that last sentence is, says so much. I have time to help you accomplish what you need to accomplish. All right. Oops. Um, I am ready immediately to show great homes to anyone who is looking. 
Thank you for sharing and recommending me. Professional knowledge and caring, I get it done, is who I am as a real estate agent. If you're an agent in this room or listening to us virtually, you need to understand this is important. When a customer calls, you need to call them back. When a realtor or one of your colleagues calls, you need to call them back. But Dan, I was busy. That's okay, have a contingency. Ever heard of a team or a partnership, right? Are there any new agents that might wanna partner up with you to handle the phone calls that you are too busy to handle? If you're going to a closing and you know you're gonna be out of, out of the office or out of your home office for, for a good part of the day, why not grab a new agent in your office and say, hey, would you mind fielding my calls for this part of the day? What potential gain or loss could you have in that four or five hours to your business if you aren't prompt and making a phone call back? Let me give you an example. You're a listing agent. You've got a property listed on State Road 52. You're getting traffic. People are driving by. Someone calls off of your sign because they're interested in making an offer on the home, but you're in a closing. It's where you should be. I want you in the closing. That's great. But you don't call them back. So where do, who do they call? Somebody else. Somebody else. And by the time you call them back at four o'clock, what have they done? They already got another agent. So now there's a buyer's agent involved. That's okay. We'll pay a buyer's agent. But what could we have done differently? Right? We could have had a buyer's agent in our own office that we're going to be working with through the transaction that's going to learn from us and that we're going to help coach through that transaction. And so I want to challenge you to think outside the box when it comes to servicing your business. You don't have to be all things to all people at all times. You have a network around you. At your brokerage, you have a team of people always willing to help you. So use the resources that are around you. All right. I think that's the end. Any questions about today? About it? are you guys seeing how the potential in working with people that you know, like, and trust? And do you see an opportunity maybe that you have in your own world? Can you think of maybe five or 10 people that you can go home right now and just connect with and, 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 and really start to get business from those people in an organic way? Good. There's just one thing that I'll add. So most agents, and you kind of alluded to it earlier, most agents view their clients as a transaction. So they view their clients transactionally. Once I finish my transaction, I'm done. We're done, yeah. right? But when you start thinking about working by referral, then you start thinking about each person you know differently. Right. So now it's not you are one transaction, it is you are your one transaction plus everybody you know. So when you start thinking about your clients differently, then now all of a sudden you start thinking about your business differently. And that's really the value of working by referral is it's not just about the one transaction that I'm closing today. It's the five other people that they know and then the five other people that their people know. Well, then it becomes the law of scale that the more you do, the more you close. Yeah, that's a, that's a great example. So how hard would you work for 50 transactions, right? Because right. when you really start to think about the, the, the effect of this, this is where it goes. If you do this the right way and it doesn't take a lot of money, it just takes the time and investment of your time, you're going to have really amazing results. And here's what's awesome. Your competition, they just aren't doing this. There's about 10% of us that just really do this well. The rest of us, we get interested and then we get disinterested. We make our calls, then we don't. So you're really going to lead the industry if you're willing to do these things. So, and Tiana has one question. She said, Please. you're doing the video about the restaurant you went to and you're recommending it. Do you still say your name and brokerage in the beginning of the video? Absolutely. And I want to add one thing to that, Tiana. That's a great question. What I've done in the past and what I've seen really good success with is to go to these local businesses and actually talk to management or talk to the owner and say, I'd like to do a little exclusive on your business. I'm a real estate professional, so people moving to the neighborhood come through me. How would you like me to feature your business on my Facebook? No charge to you, obviously, but I might need a minute or two of your time because I want to know what the favorite thing you have about your business that you want all of your customers to know. And then you sit down and you just interview that individual and you say to them, Mario, what's the best thing about Mario's barbecue here on State Road 50? And Mario is going to tell you. It's our ribs, right? It's our pulled pork sandwich. He's going to tell you. And so you're bringing something to your sphere and to the people who 
follow you on social media that isn't the same old boring message of Dan has a house to sell. Dan has a house to sell. How many times do we post our listings? Boring. And if I'm not interested in buying a house right now, I don't want to see any of Dan's posts. I'm sick of real estate, Dan. Right. But what if Dan has more depth than just real estate? That's what I'm saying to you. So yeah, great question, Tiana. Any others before we before we break up? I want you all to get yeah, home before just, the storm. So I just wanted to share something. I took to um, a couple of yesterday for lunch and I didn't do the video, which I feel like you know, I should, but um, we, all we did is, is talk about, I took my wife and she's going to be coming with me more often. And um, there was a lady, he started talking, uh, like you said, don't talk about it, talk about all the things. He started asking questions and questions. His wife was talking about how to address my wife, and the, but he wanted just to, to talk about business. So mm -hmm. she said, I'm going to shut up because it's more interesting than, anyway. Make one story short, the lady was right across the table and she was listening. So she kind of sat down with me. There you go. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And everybody around was like, you know, we were like a little loud. You know, and nice. everybody was paying attention. And I saw the smile. I, was, I, made, I didn't make them uncomfortable or anything like that. But I saw them, they listen, you know. I, I do that all the time. Sometimes I'm like, what are they talking about? It's interesting. It's not, I go over my business, but. I, I, and, and not only that, the uh, the waitress was dropping off, and she said, "You know, we have a little uh, place where you can put your cards in." Mm -hmm. And I put my cards in it, so I and you connect, right? And I connect with even with the owner because they he came out of the kitchen, and mm -hmm. it just it would be a good place to shoot a video. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's tremendous. And I and I got a referral too, so. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today, and uh, I'm here if you have questions uh, after class. Mm -hmm. Thank you to everyone for joining us online. We will look forward to seeing right. you again for another training. Have a great weekend.